O'Neill Outside with Travis Johnson. Oh, give me five one eights down, man. You gave me too pretty a shot, I couldn't pass it up. CBA 50 caliber MR. CBA nitride, muzzle loader. Outside with Travis Johnson is presented each week by CVA. It's just a better gun. Hello again, everyone. I'm O'Neill Williams. Welcome to our program. Do you get the Realtree.com newsletter? If you don't, you should. It's always packed with fabulous lessons about deer and otherwise hunting. So, I got one the other day. It's an email and it says the five top states for whitetail bucks. Number one is Texas. I get to go there. Travis and I did last year. Travis had the camera on his shoulder. I forgot my good clothes to stay warm, but we did get a deer. And I, if there's anything that makes Texas so fabulous besides the number and the size of the deer is, everything is so open, you get to see deer interacting and how they act way far away from the stand. It's not like being in Georgia where he walks out of the stand and he's 20 feet away. It's a good lesson about deer hunting on O'Neill Outside with Travis Johnson. I think you'll like this one, this is good. On our first morning out, Travis had chosen a high spot. We sat in a blind overlooking a water hole on the route between the deer's nighttime feeding area and their daytime bedding area. I thought that was a good idea. As soon as there was enough light, we began seeing a little movement. O'Neill Outside with Travis Johnson, brought to you by Conus Optics, the Whitetail Institute of North America, Bill Jordan's Realtree Camo, the Furminator, Enforcer Fire Aid 2000, Bojangles, and your local Toyota dealer. You'll pardon me for being just a little bit quiet. It's uh, three in the afternoon, North Texas deer hunt. Behind me is a field of red top millet. On my right side is a fresh field of wheat. Now there's a bottom out there about 350 yards away and the deer live in there. It's kind of heavy cover. But they'll come up here about 435, maybe a little bit in the afternoon. It's North Texas. We've got a wind out of the south, southwest. Uh, it's a muzzleloader hunt, CVA 50 caliber nitride, uh, MR, mountain rifle. You expect the shot to be about 80 to 100 yards. Uh, we will have deer to choose from, uh, we hope, and uh, maybe we'll make a choice. I'm using a 250 grain Aerolite bullet, 100 grains of Hodgson powder and pellets. Uh, so stick with us. As they come up, we'll show them to you, and maybe O'Neill can harvest a nice Texas whitetail. Does. 
Even though I was only seeing does at this point, I wanted to get my Acura up in position. The bucks can come in quickly without any notice, of course, and I wanted to be ready and be in position for a shot. As it got later in the day, more deer gathered in this harvested wheat field. A couple of bucks wandered in as the sun got lower in the sky, not unexpected. A small eight, a tall six point, but not the kind of buck you come to Texas to shoot. as the day ended, I was seeing a lot of deer, but no shooters. Hello boys and girls, O'Neill here, and I have something very interesting to show you. This is Lloyd Shoals Dam, 100 feet high, 1,200 feet long, and when it was built in 1910, it was the largest hydroelectric dam in America. And in the project, I understand Thomas Edison was even involved. And the lake it formed, Jackson Lake, at the time, at 4,750 acres, was the largest lake in the state of Georgia. Jackson Lake is fed by the South River, the Yellow River, and the Alcovia River. The Okmulgee River flows out below the dam, becoming part of the Aldabaha system, ultimately reaching the Atlantic coast near Darien. For over a hundred years, Lloyd Shoals Dam has been providing electric power for Georgians and recreational opportunities too here on Jackson Lake. A beach, two boat ramps, picnic areas, a pavilion, and a fishing pier. Below the dam too, you'll find a tail race fishing pier, another park with picnic areas, and another boat ramp. Georgia Power actively manages the land around the lake to help preserve the natural beauty of the forests, wildlife, wildflowers, and water quality. And that includes active conservation of the rare robust red horse fish and the mussel populations in the Okmulgee River downstream. So let's think about it. For over a hundred years, Georgia Power has been providing electric power for Georgians recreational opportunities for Georgians, and managing the lake and the forest for the plants and the wildlife. 100 years, still going strong. Cool. The number one defensive mechanism for the white-tailed deer that keeps him alive is his nose. It's not his eyes, it's not his ears, it's all of those things, but the number one is his nose. He can smell you and where you've been, the truck you drove and everything, you know, for five miles. And years ago, I had the opportunity to speak with a scientist about that sort of thing. And what he said was the most perfect way to keep your clothes scent free so he doesn't find you, the deer that is. And here it is, it's a lot of trouble, but it's worthwhile. Wash your clothes in a cloak, some scent-free uh, soap. Uh, it removes all the human scent and leaves no scent. You rinse it two times, it's good. You get some pine needles and maybe some leaves and you put them, the clothes, and all of that in a plastic bag. And you zip it closed, okay? So you stop for breakfast, you get up at deer camp, you're, you know, if you go that way, when you're in the stand, the white-tailed deer, mm, he had pancakes and he stopped for fuel 
and I think the last time, I think his wife drove this car last time, I could smell the perfume. No, your hat, your gloves, your socks, your camo, all go in a plastic bag. And when you get to the stand, you change clothes and put what you had on in the bag. Is it a lot of trouble? You bet. Is it worthwhile? I think so. And that is your hunting tip of the week and one of the best ones ever. On our second morning out, Travis and I returned to the spot we had hunted the morning before. However, poor little O'Neill. A cold front had moved through overnight, and I was not ready for that. Exercise some patience. It's cold. I'm cold. I didn't. I didn't wear enough stuff. I almost never do. And I always say, the next time I'm going to really dress warm. And then when I'm in the room getting dressed, I don't do it. I don't know why that is, but. Right now it's 23 degrees, and it's a test. I went to Bass Pro about two weeks ago, and I bought some really nice hand warmers that you light and you close them up and you put them in your pocket and they'll last almost all day. Really good stuff. Uh, trouble is I left them in my desk at home, probably under some papers and some other junk. So I don't have them. I have them. I just don't have them with me. And, and the, the gloves are real nice. They're redhead gloves, but I'm cold. If I stay until Friday, that's two more days. It's going to be six degrees. I'll have my hand warmers by then because I'll be sitting at my desk and I'll look at them and say, boy, oh boy, those are good hand warmers. I don't have them now. It's cold. I also have some uh, some binoculars that I recommend highly. I got them from Conus. They're ten fifties. Wow, what a big wide view. Ten times magnification. But I left them in the truck because I was cold. So I left my hand warmers and I left my foot warmers and I left my binoculars in the truck. Oh, here. Travis just got some. These are 1042s. They're really good. Let's see. Somebody's 
been talking too loud. Thank you. Now, let's join O'Neill for some flavorful cooking with Swaggerty Farms Sausage. It's hard to beat ribs and baked beans, and I'm going to take the baked beans to a new level. You're going to be surprised. Now, the first thing to do, in this Dutch oven, I have already cooked some link sausage. Whose link sausage? Let me show you. It's Swaggerty's link. This is the premium link sausage. It looks like that in the store. See, it's Swaggerty's. And that's what we always buy. <laughs> so, I'm gonna make baked beans, but the sausage added it really makes a huge difference, and I'm gonna cook it on the grill. We've got pinto beans and great northern beans, and I don't know if it's the same order, and I think these are kidney beans. So I'll put in lots of brown sugar. I mean, you can't have too much. Ketchup. Let me get rid of that ketchup. Onions, come on out of there now. Is this the way you make baked beans? This all sounds traditional so far, with the exception of the sausage. And you're going to find out what a huge difference that makes. Mustard. And I can put these back on the grill, and I'm gonna cook this at 350 and it's going to make a huge difference to you with the sausage involved. Here's my seasoning for the ribs. More the better, isn't it the way it is with you? It is with me, more the better. Three fifty for a while, where's my lid? Somebody's got my lid for the, for the Dutch oven. Hold on. Locate the top for the Dutch oven. And 350 till everything's done. And I'll show you what it looks like. You can't taste it, but I sure can. We've all had ribs, we've all had slaw, we've all had baked beans. But this recipe for baked beans will change your life. Swaggerty's Link Sausage. Don't forget it. Want the recipe? Swaggerty's.com, O'NeillOutside.com. We have more with O'Neill and Travis. But first, let's thank these sponsors. QDMA, the Quality Deer Management Association. Georgia Power. Timbuktu Outdoors. Year One. The Georgia Department of Economic Development, Vote U.S., and Tough Shed. Time for the CDA guest book. This week from Randall Hayes in LaPorte, Texas. He said he likes the show. It's a good way to start, isn't it? He says, is there any way when looking at a deer track if you can tell if it's a buck or a doe? Well, you probably can from the size the depth of the track, whether it was raining or not. Maybe you'll see dew claws at the back of the track. It's just bigger, but they're big-footed does too. The only way that you can absolutely tell is that you saw it yourself. So you can be entertained with thinking it's a buck. It may not be, but you're not gonna shoot that one anyway because he's already gone. If you'd like to win or be awarded a CVA muzzleloader, Visit the CVA guest book. If we use your comment or question on the air, CVA will send you the muzzle loader. On my second afternoon, I had bundled up much, much better. So we returned to that cut wheat field. It's a buck right there. Come on in, brother. Give me a shot, pal. I'm gonna take it if those other deer get out of the way. Just a little bit more. You ready? 
Yes, indeed. There he goes right there. Let's go see what we've got. This is the one they call Claude. I'm not sure why, but that, that is Claude. One, two, three, four. He's got a broken antler right there. We'll clean him up for some photos. And we worked hard for him. This is the end of the second day. It's 100 yards with Hodgson 2 50 caliber pellets and a power belt Aerolite bullet with a 50 caliber MR mountain rifle from CVA. And it's never, ever failed me. Oh, gosh, we worked hard for him. Good for you, son. Oh, now the work begins. Give Texas a try, it's worth it. <laughs>